Joining us now is part of our Curb Your Inflation series, Karen Carniel Tambor, Bridgewater, co-CIO of Sustainability. Karen, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. Good to be here. So do you think investors should be preparing anyway for inflation, even though Powell says we're nowhere close to 70s-style inflation and he doesn't expect it to last? Absolutely, because as an investor, every time you have a big bias in your portfolio, you are implicitly making a bet that you know what is going to happen. And so, sure, inflation might, this might be a nothing burger, but it also might not be. And in choosing not to have any inflation hedge assets, you're taking a very big bet on your portfolio that you know the answer to this question. So typically you think inflation hedge assets gold? Is that what you're recommending investors buy? What, what are you thinking? I think it's very good to be diversified because you don't know what kind of inflation you'll get. And so almost every investor you talk to definitely has some treasury bonds. Almost nobody doesn't have treasury bonds. And very few people actually have a lot of inflation-linked treasury bonds. So that's one switch almost every investor can make where now you're just going to literally get paid CPI. So whatever inflation is, just get paid CPI. Now, gold is pretty good for more monetary style inflation where you know the currency is basically falling, but a balanced mix of commodities gives you much more access to the question of you know, kind of what are the literally raw materials that might get stretched if you keep having the kind of supply pressures we have today. And so if you need more steel, you might want to have iron ore, you might need more copper or more aluminum, those sorts of exposures uh, gives you a basket that as the real economy has these inflation pressures, you have a wide array of things that just pay you um, as those supply pressures happen. Have you missed the chance, though, Karen, on a lot of those commodities which were, which were shooting up a couple of months ago and already started to pull back? Well, I think a lot of those commodities have a very good secular story behind them because it takes so many years to bring capacity online. And if you look at what we need to do to transition our economy to lower carbon, you basically need a whole lot of aluminum, copper, steel, and so on and so forth. And so it's going to take a lot longer to actually bring online the mining that we need. That said, you know, it's back to this idea of tactical versus strategic, which is, look, a lot of what's going to determine here uh, how they do is what how the real economy plays out, what inflationary pressures we see. And by not having any allocation there, I think it's a very big view that you know inflation is definitely going to be transitory. You, you also are telling investors to watch their currency exposure given inflation les lessons of the past. What do, what do you mean? What do we need to know here? Absolutely. I think investors have been really influenced by the last 10 or 15 years where you held your assets. And the choice you made of what currency to denominate them in or whether to hedge the currency exposure or not almost didn't matter. And so when you held European equities or UK equities or Japanese equities or emerging equities, you could choose to hedge or not hedge. It honestly didn't affect your final outcome very much. So that currency hedging decision was a very small part of the picture. Then if you look back to the 1970s, that actually could matter much more than which stock market you picked. The inflation uh, had a very, very big effect on relative currencies. So as one country got inflation relative to the other, you had very big moves in currencies and the volatility in currencies rivaled what was going on often in the stock market. So over a period of many years, the choice to hedge or not hedge made a big difference. So the fact that inflation is even on the table again, that we have these fiscal and monetary policies that are trying to reflate the economy, says this is a very good time as an investor to pause and say, what are my currency exposures? Do I want to be hedged? What kind of currency do I need to spend in eventually? And therefore, if currencies get volatile because inflation becomes a bigger deal in one country versus the other, how am I hedged? Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.